everyone, welcome to Fighting Over the Card Catalog, a snarky look back on young adult novels of the 80s and 90s. I'm Jess. And I'm Steven, and I'm here to make my wife happy. We're taking a journey to find out how many terrible, and hopefully some not so terrible books from my youth I can get my husband to read before he reconsiders this whole marriage. Hello, love. Hey, how are you? I'm excellent. How are you? <laughs> I'm better than I was yesterday. Good. Because of the book? Yeah, because okay. I have to finish this book. How are you otherwise? Um, you know. Um, okay. It's all relative. Okay, we had a great weekend, though. Yes. Yeah, our besties came up early for a weekend, and we went to the biggest book sale in the whole world. If you saw my Instagram, oh. our Instagram story, you would have seen our... I took some video on our story, and I put up a picture of our, just the young adult part of our haul on there. there we did get more books than that. Yeah, we spent seven hours there. We spent seven hours, and none of us looked at everything. Yeah. It was a Dallas Half Price Books clearance sale, by the way, and apparently every big city has them, so if you're in the U.S., just kind of have high, Half Price Books, I don't know. Uh, but anyways. Yeah, check yeah, so out and I, see if your big city, nearest big city has one, because it's amazing. I actually found a young adult book from 1909 while I was there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which led you to decide all the books for your birthday month of November that we're going to cover. But we'll release those later. Keep you in suspense, because it's still spoofy time. That was dumb. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> But speaking of spoopy, y'all, the most frightening, the most terrifying, the most spoopiest, the most horrifying occurrence to ever happen on Fighting Over the Card Catalog has happened. Steven had sincere feelings about a babysitter <laughs> club book. <laughs> Reading this week's book, Christy and the Snobs, number 12, by Anna Martin. Why don't you tell us about it? Christy's mom got married again last summer, and now Christy and her family live in a new neighborhood. The kids there aren't very friendly. In fact, they're, well, snobs. They criticize Christy's clothes, they make fun of the Babysitter's Club, and worst of all, they laugh at Louie, Christy's pet collie, who's going blind. Nobody does that and gets away with it. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Nobody does that and gets away with it. <laughs> Christy's fighting mad, and she's not going to put up with it much longer. If anybody can beat a snob attack, it's the Babysitter's Club. And that's just what they're going to do. <laughs> <sighs> so... Right. After my dog died when I was 10, I didn't read this book again until, oh, I forgot to see when it was. Whatever year I read this for the blog. Um, yeah, so that was 1993 to, to 2014. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, I hadn't read it again until this week. And I started crying on chapter three. <laughs> <laughs> And I had to take a break. Um, I resigned myself to my eyes leaking just the entire time. It's fine. What'd you think of the book? Um, I mean, it was okay. It was a Babysitter's Club book. It was a Babysitter's Club book. A couple things happened and... Boy, <laughs> that's all I'm going to get. That's all you're going to get. Wow! Okay. I don't. I mean, what do you what do you want me to say about? I don't know. It? Um, this book sucked in so many ways. Uh huh. Why? Um, because it made you cry. Yeah, it, made, it made you cry. cry. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's the main thing. But like, I don't know. There was like this whole interaction with like the one of the snobby girls, mm -hmm. and then like. It takes one or two oh, more interactions right. yeah. before they're like best friends. It turned on a dime. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty shitty. That was shitty writing. But you do have to admit, right, that the writing was good of yeah, taking was... you through Louie. Yeah. 
I mean, it was very realistic. And it was like, well, you know, we'll probably discuss it more. But anyway, it's like it wasn't just to get you a little bit. It was like they kept going through it and kept. Yeah, you you went through it with them. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's really good writing for a middle grade book. And it's probably really important. Um. I just say that because I it didn't help me deal with anything, <laughs> um, but <laughs> a lot of but kids. But you had I read it, it before, so I had read it before. I knew what happened. You're right. You're right. So then, on the scale of one being the best book ever to ten being the Dementor's Kiss, second your love of reading hmm. from a book. Uh, four. Yeah. Yeah, probably the highest rated babysitter. Yeah, I'd say so too. Just because, yeah, it got real, real. (laughs) (laughs) In general, I just can't deal with animals dying or being hurt or scared or confused. Hmm. (laughs) I can't handle any of that, no matter how fictional they are. Like, I, I will cry in the theater at every A Dog's Journey, A Dog's Purpose trailer. I will not go see the movie. So... Yeah, this is a rough one. <laughs> um, so we start out with poor old Louis, the brewer Thomas's good old collie. He starts limping one morning, and it doesn't look too bad. Like he kind of stops it before like Christy's mom sees, but she's like, "Well, we'll keep an eye on it." That same morning, Christy's bus is late, and while she's waiting, she gets her first look at a bunch of private school girls in her neighborhood. Which, by the way, there are two private schools in Stony Brook. The one that all these girls go to, and then the one that Karen and her friends go to. Right. It seemed like one was for older kids and one was for younger kids. Is that not the case? No, because um, the Delaney kids are like the same age as the Papadakis kids, and they go to the different schools. Hmm. They're six and eight. So Anyway, so they get into it a little bit. Uh Christy calls them snobs, and one of them calls her a jerk, and it's all just very mature. So, good news, in chapter two, it's almost time to completely begin being able to start skipping chapter two. Right. Yeah? Did you mainly just, like, glaze over it? Yeah. 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 Pretty soon you'll be able to absolutely do that. I'll keep looking at it for fashion alerts, Hmm. because those happen, but yeah. So, when Christy gets home that afternoon, she calls Louie to her, and the poor baby walks right into a table leg instead of getting to her. And so, then her mom decides, okay, yeah, he should go to the vet. But she just sends him with Christy and Charlie and David Michael, and it's like, I guess you can do that when you're hella rich. Just send your kids to the vet with the credit card or whatever. It's like... Major monetary decisions happen, like, every time at the vet. Right. (laughs) At least for us. (laughs) But especially for something like that, you know something's up. You know something expensive is going to go down, even if you don't know what. But no, just send them. I don't know. That was weird to me. That must be nice. It must be nice. It must be nice to have brewer money on your side. Mm So the vet tells them that mainly, you know, he's getting old uh, and he has arthritis and he's losing his eyesight. And she gives him some pills for the pain and tells him that, you know, he still needs to go on some walks, but just slow ones. But it's still important for him to get exercise. And Chris. Now, they should have been doing some like blood work and stuff. because You would think so. Because. He starts going downhill fast. So fast. And it's stuff that they should have caught if they Mm -hmm. had done the blood work. But, you know, I don't know. Maybe vetting wasn't as good back then. (laughs) Vetting. I mean, to be fair, they do foreshadow some of it in earlier books. Mm -hmm. But it's more just him getting old, not just like this rapid decline. But there was a little bit of foreshadowing. But, um... So Christy says, it must be scary, I thought, not to see well and to know that you're in a strange place. And that's probably where I started crying the first time. Hmm. Because I wonder if this is like the genesis for my (laughs) over-empathizing with animals. Because that's what I, that's the sort of thing I think. Yeah. 
Yeah, like it must be so scary not understanding what's going on. Like, you know, if they're just dropped off at the vet or grooming right. or whatever, you know, I worry so much about that. Yeah. And so when I look at dogs in the shelter, I'm just like, oh, my God, I can't handle. Yeah, you can't. <laughs> you can't even watch like rescue stories on Facebook. No, <laughs> um, like even the Not even best the happy ones. The best videos are like military people coming home, yeah, and their dogs just freaking out. Right. And I cry too much over that because I think <laughs> about the year or whatever they've been deployed, where that poor dog is just so confused. I'm about to start crying already. <laughs> yeah. That reminds me of the one um, where the guy was in the hospital for like six months. Oh no, I hate that one. <laughs> <laughs> and... Oh, I should have brought that whole bottle of wine here. <laughs> <laughs> and the dog sees him for the first time and doesn't recognize him. He's mm -hmm. like totally unrecognizable because he's gone through so much. Yeah, just by look. And then he gets up close to him and smells him. And then when he smells him, he starts going crazy. You know? Oh, it's too <laughs> much. Like, it's too <laughs> you should see her now. She's got... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to take my glasses <laughs> off. I'm going to have to go like that. And I'm obviously genuinely happy for these dogs. It's just... <laughs> Shut up. It's just that you empathize. Your paper towels behind you. May I have them, please? <laughs> I meant to bring in some... Why did I put on makeup today? <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you going to get me a real real? Yeah, because this isn't the last time. <laughs> Yay, I love you. <laughs> Toilet paper and bottle of wine. <laughs> so when they get home, <laughs> uh, Christy decides she'll do just that, take him for a nice slow walk. Um, but unfortunately, they run into some of the snobs. They introduce themselves as Shannon Kilborn, who is Christy's age, and her perfect Bernese mountain dog, Astrid, who sounds just beautiful and lovely, and the younger Amanda Delaney, who is carrying her $400 cat, Priscilla, on this walk. What is that about? But okay, she just wants to show her off, I bet. Yeah. 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 See, my cat. Good job for Priscilla for being. So, Came in this encounter, they describe Louie as looking really rough mm -hmm. and being a mutt. Yeah. Now, on the cover of this Babysitter's Club... No, he's a full-on collie. There is nothing mutt about that dog. Mm -mm. It looks like a full-blown collie. Yeah. And... Like, the only possible thing is that... Maybe it was a miniature collie mixed with a regular size collie. But, but no, it's not. It, I think they just mean it in the derogatory sense. They really you know? need to um, do a better job of their book covers. Oh, boy. We may have to do a whole special on, I don't know how to say his name. It's Hodges. Hodges. Anyways, yeah, he is controversial in the BSC fandom. Mm -hmm. Actually, not so much. Basically, everyone hates him. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, but I choose they're just using that derogatorily because, you know, because people, some people, snobs, they think mutts are not as good as pure red when that's absolutely not the truth. Right. Thank you. Anyway. And he smells, because he smells like the vet. Mm -hmm. And that's just true. I mean, anytime you take a dog to the vet for five minutes, they come back smelling like the vet for three days. Um, and then they call each other jerks and snobs again uh -huh. and go Stick on their, their way. Stick their tongues out at each other. Yeah. So Christy has a job in her neighborhood sitting for the Papadakis kids. Do you think that's how you say it? Papadakis? Pap Papadakis? Papadakis. I was just because it's like Papas. Papa. I've, uh, I've heard the real name Papadopoulos. Papadopoulos? Papadopoulos? Yeah, Papadopoulos. that sounds real. All right, so I'll say Papadakis. That sounds good. All right. Um, so, yeah, even though they're in her neighborhood, they are totally not snobs. They're just normal rich people. 
Their names are Lenny and Hanny, and they're friends with Karen and David Michael. And they have some awesome pets, <laughs> Myrtle the Turtle and Noodle the Poodle. Right. That they love very much. Um, Lenny tells Christy all about the people in her neighborhood, including the Kilborns and the Delaney's and how much they suck. And then Christy gets a phone call. It's Shannon, and she says she saw smoke coming from an upstairs window. So Christy rushes the scared kids outside. But when they get out there, Christy realizes she can't see or smell any smoke at all. Uh, But Shannon's in her front yard laughing her ass off. Which, I mean, it's just fucking terrible. You traumatized children. They were out there (laughs) crying. And I mean, and they couldn't find Noodle. They thought he was going to burn up or she, I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's fucked up. And when she does tell, she does tell Mrs. Papadakis this. Um, and she's like, I'm going to have to have a serious talk with Shannon before she babysits the next time. Mm-hmm. Which, I mean, I personally would be like, that bitch not coming in here again. But <laughs> but then the next time she needs a babysitter, she calls Shannon. She does. <laughs> mm. But anyways, to get her back, Christy sets her up with a diaper delivery service. In her name. In Shannon's name, and she sees them pull up to her house the next morning, a big old truck with diapers. I didn't know that was a thing. That'd be cool if it was still a thing. Yeah. This was before the whole disposable diaper thing, so I don't... It was not. I didn't even know it was a thing still in the 80s. A diaper delivery service? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that either. But it was not before disposable diapers. Yeah, they had the, where they would deliver diapers and then you'd you'd basically just um, scrape them in the trash and then hand them in back into the diaper delivery people. And then they would wash them and you would get new ones. And oh. they had the little um, safety pins that you would right. put in. But in. we had disposable diapers then. When? In the 80s. Right, but I'm saying that the delivery service was before, started before oh, oh, okay, disposable yes. diapers. I thought you were saying there were no disposable diapers in the 80s. I'm like, bullshit. No. I know I changed my brother's diapers like a bunch I, of times. I, I wasn't aware that there were any diaper delivery services in the 80s. And no, me neither. But this may be one of those and things. Yeah. Of course. Of course. Um, yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to have to lurk in the diaper delivery services we'll lurk now. Lurk into it. Lurk into it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess I just assumed that they delivered disposable diapers, but that makes much more sense. Okay, yes, it thank was you. not disposable. <laughs> well, I thought, well, that would be cool. You know, it was just like postmating it to you, essentially, but they just, you know, yeah, did it. And... You know, my son has decided he's doing... The cloth diapers while right. they're at home. So that, I mean, that would be nice if he could just get clean ones delivered. Yeah, and... it would. So Marianne has a job with the sitting for the perfect Perkinses, and it's mainly boring. Um, so Jamie Newton is over to play, and the girls are like real excited because their new little sister is going to be born soon. But Jamie's still all salty about his little sister and tells Gabby. He is very salty while he he's there. so salty. <laughs> Every time they talk about it. He's, he's like he's, grumpy. And, yeah. Uh, he's like grumpy old man. <laughs> like, like, I can't believe you guys are happy about that. You shouldn't be. <laughs> yep. And he tells Gabby that he wanted to name his sister Stupid Head. And this really upsets Gabby. And she goes off to her room and Jamie goes home. That's right. Four-year-old Jamie just goes home by himself without Marianne worrying about it a bit. Right. I was like, what the fuck? (laughs) (laughs) But anyways, they have a tea party to cheer Gabby up, and that's pretty much it. It's very boring. So now Christy gets to sit. That's one of those things, something happened. (laughs) Yeah. I gotta put something in a book uh, that happened. Yeah, there are a couple. Yeah, just like, why is this chapter here? Yeah. (laughs) Um, to fill out pages and say that something happened. Something happened. So Christy sits for the Delaney's, Amanda and her brother Max. And they truly are awful little bratty snobs. But we get a fashion alert. <gasps> In their 
wear school uniforms, I'm guessing. Amanda, her Mary Jane's polished, her blonde hair parted evenly and held in place with a big blue bow, sat primly on one side. She was wearing a blue corduroy jumper over a white blouse. Her jumper matched her ribbon exactly. Next to her was Max, the six-year-old, a blonde-haired, blue-eyed angel of a boy, dressed in corduroy pants and unwrinkled alligator sh- shirt and dock siders. Never mind, I don't think that's their school uniform. That's just the way they dress. So they boss Christy around all afternoon, and she puts up with it because she doesn't want to make these new clients mad, which still doesn't seem like her, though. Yeah. I got the reasoning, but it's a lot. And she gets another call from Shannon, this time saying she's sitting at the Papadakis's, and the little one, Sari, sorry, see, that's another one, I don't know. Sorry, probably. Sorry. Won't stop crying. So, Christy and Amanda and Max haul ass over there, but, of course, there's nothing wrong, and Shannon's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I was like, that's lame. (laughs) But as they're leaving, Shannon yells something about... Thanks for pushing her out of all her babysitting jobs. And Christy finally gets it. (laughs) Although, obviously, she's not pushing her out of all the jobs. Mm -hmm. They're sitting literally right at that moment. So, we begin some foreshadowing with Jeff. Even though it's mainly another something happens chapter. Um... He's being a real pain in the ass, even though he's normally awesome. We love Jeff, but not now. Um, he's just being a dick. Um, but there will be more on that to come. This is all set yeah. up over a few books. I mean, it sounds plausible. Like he's, I don't know how old he is. Ten. Oh, that's a little too young for hormonal changes. Eh, not necessarily, but. But he I mean, it's a lot of his dad over the summer. Mm-hmm. And then had to come home, and he's with his mom, who is dating a lot. A and lot. Gone, and gone a lot. Mm-hmm. And his sister, who... We're so judgy about her. Basically seems to be taking care of him, mm-hmm. making meals for him, or prepping meals, or whatever. And She's just heating up casseroles. Yeah, generally but... watching over him. Yeah. Yeah, because Sharon... Sharon go, goes out a lot. Hey, she's trying to get back on her groove. <laughs> yeah, she went there, people. I went there. <laughs> so, yeah. But this time, I mean, she's going out with the trip man again. We don't get to see much of him, but it's nice to know he's still around. Um, yeah, that seems to be who she's going out with the most. Yeah, I mean, it's like she's think, forgotten Richard at this yeah, point. Yeah, you would think if she was actually dating other people that she would throw in a Richard every once in a while. Yeah, no. no. I think there's a whole backstory there that we don't know. Mm. I bet there's fan fiction for that point in time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, oh, you love this part where Dawn's watching her mom get ready for the date. She sits there and goes, I like to smell the perfume and watch you get ready and dream about what you'll do on your date. (laughs) Dawn, you nasty. (laughs) Anyways, he's a big jerk. Jeff is not trip, man. But he's like, yeah, he's yelling about how he wishes he could go back to California. And Dawn tells her mom this and she ends up calling uh, their dad. That night, and they talk about it. Um, but whatever Don hears, she thinks it sounds like his dad, their dad, doesn't want Jeff or anything, and he's hesitant. To... Yeah, yeah. The other girls are just like, you know, it's a big change. I mean, he's just gotten back to being like a bachelor, and so that cheers Don up some because it's like logistical stuff mainly. Yeah, yeah. Like he'd have to get a housekeeper and change the hours at work. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it makes sense. So, anyways, we'll get back to that more in other books. Can't wait. <laughs> um, spoiler alert: you did not choose any Babysitters Club books for November, so <laughs> yeah, it will be a little while after this. <laughs> so, back at the mansion, <sighs> Louis is barely moving around. 
And when he does, he has a big old accident in the house on an oriental rug. And it's really heartbreaking because he's a very good boy. And he's not, he's not one for having accidents. He just couldn't help it. He couldn't get there outside in time. Ah. <laughs> so this is like a week later. He's gone from <clears throat> running into chairs mm -hmm. to... Losing control of his bladder. Yeah. It's really bad. Yeah. It's really bad. And so, yeah, okay. So, next part. So, Stacy totes knows psychology, you guys, because she mm. read, like, an article in a magazine once. <laughs> um, so, she's excited to sit for the Delaney Bratz because she knows what to do exactly. And she totally weirds them out by taking, like, every annoying thing they do one step further. Like, their mom said they need to clean up their playroom. And they're like, nah. Stacy's like, yeah. Because they're all like, we like it messy. And Stacy's yeah. like, oh, yeah, I see what you mean. Let's she's make like, it she's messier. Like, Maybe we should go ahead and clean up. Now we like it messy. You should clean it up if you don't. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. And then she's like, no, no, no. I see what you mean. Okay, yeah. I like a messy room, too. And she's like. Dumps a whole bunch of blocks out. And I was like, oh, well, that made me stress a little. <laughs> so she starts dumping stuff out on the floor. Yeah, and that freaks the kids out. And they're like, we don't like it this messy. <laughs> and so they clean up. And it's actually a pretty good plan. And yeah, so there's things like that with like getting the milk and stuff. They end up doing it and cleaning up after themselves. And it's great. They're not angels, but like they're a lot better than they were. Even though they think she is just batshit. <laughs> so, so they remind me of classic entitled children mm -hmm. whose parents get what they want and teach their children to get what they want. Mm -hmm. Basically, mainly by being demanding. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and making people feel like they're entitled. Right. Like, the, the, like they themselves are entitled. Right. Yeah. So they're like anyway. Trump children. Mm. Anyway, so Christy sits for them again. And she tries out Stacy's trick, and it works. But then the doorbell rings, and it turns out to be a guy with a pizza she did not order. But Christy realizes, oh, it happened very quickly. And she's like, oh, Christy Thomas is actually next door. And describes Shannon to him. And so a few minutes later, Shannon and her sister Tiffany and Astrid... Show up with the pizza demanding money. And Christy's like, it's your goddamn fault. Yeah. I don't owe you any that, money. What are you talking you're about? You're the one that ordered the fucking pizza. I'm not paying you that. <laughs> um, and so Shannon picks up a piece of pizza and says she's going to throw it at Christy. And Christy's like, well, I'm going to throw it at Astrid. And then you'll have a pepperoni mountain dog. <laughs> it was hilarious. It was hilarious. <laughs> It is so hilarious. It's so funny that all of them start to laugh, and now all of a sudden they're all friends. The end. Ah, uh, it's so fucking weird. Yeah. It's like, hey, it's not funny. Although I did almost say pepperoni, so huh. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you have a pepperoni dog, uh, which is a lot which funnier. Would have been better. Yeah, <sighs> Jesus. <laughs> but. <sighs> it's just hmm. it's not funny and it wouldn't it wouldn't fix a 13 year old girl feud no. in any way nope it was very lazy but it does so they're on their way to being friends I so guess. they all go into the house and eat the pizza and christy offers to pay for half of it it's like what is that that's some bullshit christy so, here's another just there to fill it out chapter. <laughs> and Claudia's spelling goes off the fucking rails in this book. Oh my god, her notebook entry was just... I mean, it's always been bad, but this is where it starts to just get like... Are you, Are you five? Even going to school? Yeah. Oh. So, Claudia and super ha helper Mallory sit for the rest of the Pike Kids... Um, five of whom have chicken pox, and it just sounds great. Um, and then at the end of the night, Vanessa and Nikki, the only two who didn't have it, 
are sitting there counting their spots. And that's it. <laughs> it's like a lot of times the other sitting chapters have some sort of connection. Story. Yeah, some sort of connection to the main storyline. None of these two. Yeah. <laughs> it's really bad. Um, but I'm just going to say it's because Anne was having a hard time writing the book um, because it is so upsetting. We're about to really get into it now. Get ready. So Louis having more accidents and is obviously in more pain. Um, so the vet suggests uh, bringing him in twice a day for shots. Um, and Watson and Elizabeth and Charlie um, do what they can to make that happen. And that's incredibly good of all of them. Again, it sounds but, like they still haven't run any blood work on this day. I'm going to hope they did and just kind of assume, hopefully. Um, but one day, Louie can't work his back legs at all and it freaks the little kids out. When he tries to drag them behind him, and it's just, it sounds really traumatizing for the little kids. Because yeah. remember, Andrew's like four, Karen's six, David Michael's seven, and, you know, that's his dog, essentially. He's basically freaking out, dragging himself around it sounds awful. the kitchen. Yeah. And running into things. Yeah. So, god damn it. <laughs> so do you remember what happens next so you can say it so I don't have to? Um, uh, so what happens next is... They have a family meeting. And decide. Oh, but we haven't talked... So we just kind of glossed over. Okay, yeah. So he was going to the vet twice a day, mm -hmm. and it wasn't getting better. Right. And she called the vet and talked to the vet. The mother did. Yeah. And the mother said, so yeah, we're going to have a... We'll have a family meeting. Mm -hmm. When everybody gets home. Mm -hmm. And then she told him that something was failing. Hmm. I yeah. don't remember what. And that he wasn't getting better. Yeah. The shots weren't working. And so the vet wanted to put him to sleep. Yeah. And also, um, that... Taking him in twice a day wasn't good for him, which is what I thought. Right. You know, I think today, I don't know if it was different in the 80s, but today they would teach you to give the shots yeah, yourself. Yeah, they would. Right. And that's exactly you know? what I was thinking. I can't I imagine. Rushing. Can you imagine taking Millie to a bed twice a yeah. day? I mean, they only it was only for a week, but. I mean. Oh, my God. <laughs> but it would be worse if you were having to, like, carry her and. Right, exactly. And, well, I was just thinking, I mean, yeah. we just have to get her butt up in the... Yeah, you have, have to get her butt up in the car. <laughs> and that's enough. <laughs> but, yeah. Um... Mom said bluntly, Kids, I'm sorry to have to tell you this, but Louie is very, very sick now. And he's not going to get better. Charlie and Sam and I lowered our heads, but David, Michael, Andrew, and Karen looked at Mom with wide, surprised eyes. Oh, no. What about the shots and the pills? Said my little brother. They're not working, Mom told him. You can see that, can't you, honey? David Michael nodded, his eyes filling with tears. So what do we me do too. now? Asked Sam. You're trying to make me cry. Mom glanced at Watson, and I could see that her eyes were teary, too. Watson took her hand and reassured her. <laughs> Dr. Smith su suggested that we have Louie put down tomorrow, she said gently. I <laughs> you. <laughs> Well, I was going to say something about this next bit, but now I really can't. After a few moments, yeah. <laughs> David Michael announced, I'm going to sleep with Louie tonight. We knew he meant sleep in the family room with him, and I'm sure he thought someone was going to try to stop him, but no one said a word. <laughs> so Louie and David Michael spent the night together, just as Louie had often joined one of us in bed to keep us company. <laughs> Dave and Michael kept Louie company during his last night with us. I hate you. <laughs> you made yourself cry. <laughs> Was it worth it? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking don't about. Don't read anymore. Because <laughs> I'm going to try to say something, but I can't if I cry. So that part, oh, I can't say it. <laughs> 
that part really got me because when I spent that one night with Rocky, <laughs> on the floor in the living room, just like David Michael. <laughs> Okay, time for a break. <laughs> hey, if you've been enjoying our show, please share it, tweet it, tell your friends and enemies. Word of mouth is the best way for podcasts to grow, and we would just really appreciate it. I know if you're listening, you probably have some bookworm friends from back in the day who would love to reminisce with us. Please consider rating us on Apple Podcasts and subscribing there, or at any of your favorite podcast places of choice. Come hang out with us on Facebook, Instagram, Tumblr, YouTube, Pinterest, all at Fighting Over the Card Catalog, and on Twitter at Card Catalog Pod, and me, personally, at Just Digress. And last but not least, check out our website where you can find all the things I just mentioned. David Michael had spent an uncomfortable <laughs> night, an uncomfortable night with Louis. He had he he had insisted on sleeping next to him on the floor. Oh my god! <laughs> okay, so what happened was <laughs> we yeah. had to take an extended break. We had to take an extended break here um, because I almost died. <clears throat> I had wine in my mouth when Steven started reading that bit and I was trying not to laugh and trying not to cry and and then something (laughs) and instead she made herself throw up I didn't make myself throw up I threw up it was not on purpose and it smelled like baby puke you guys It it was so gross I enjoyed our ravioli that we had for dinner, uh, but I did not enjoy it the second time. I did not that enjoy seeing it. No, that I did gross. not. I'm sorry. Well, it was your fault. So, <clears throat> I was trying to get you to stop. <laughs> I knew I was going to get serious. Anyway, I have changed into pajamas now. And here's the I part I was going to read. <laughs> And now we're going to get back into the crying. Okay, let's go. Oh, God. David Michael has spent an uncomfortable night with Louis. He had insisted on sleeping next to him on the floor. He wouldn't even consider the couch. Louis whined a lot that night, according to Mom, who, although David Michael didn't know it, spent most of the nice night reading in the kitchen, keeping her ears open to problems in the family room. But toward dawn, both Louis and my brother fell asleep. They stayed asleep until 9 o'clock when mom reluctantly woke David Michael. You proud of yourself? <laughs> we have dogs in here now, too, by the way. <laughs> so, yeah, it's decided that Christy and David Michael and Elizabeth will take Louie to the vet. Um, but only Elizabeth's going to go in with him. Uh, David Michael makes her promise that she'll... <laughs> God damn it. That she'll hold him while it happens. But she goes through the whole explanation of wrapping him up in a towel mm-hmm. and putting him in the car and the car ride it's over. It's so good, you guys. With David <laughs> Michael, like, sitting next to him with his head in his lap and Christy in the very back. It's so sad. <laughs> but... I think it really is a good representation (laughs) (laughs) of putting a dog down, and I think that's good. (laughs) They get to the vet, and there's several people there. Oh, he just wants me to cry so bad. And the receptionist knows who they are and says the vet is in with somebody, but she'll call you in next. And, of course, everybody in the Everybody in the reception room knows what's going on. (laughs) And people in the reception room start stiffing and crying. (laughs) Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. Continue. (laughs) And then finally the receptionist calls 
Miss Brewer, Brewster, Brewer, Miss Brewer. <laughs> Brewer into the room. And You're crying over goodbyes. her damn dog. You should know her name. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. And so that's basically what happens. Are you done with that bit? <laughs> yeah, I think I'm done. Okay, cool. So Karen decides. <laughs> Karen decides they need to have a funeral. They didn't get him cremated or anything, so they don't have anything to bury. But they decide it's a good thing to do anyway. Um, everyone has a job to do, and they make him a little wooden cross. Um, they fight over whether it's going to be R.I.P. or rest in peace. They decide just big capital letters in the whole thing written out. Uh, so they, uh, <laughs> so they bury his leash and his wolves. <laughs> but before they can do that, uh, Karen's like, "Not everybody's here," and they're like, "What the fuck?" And then Shannon and Tiffany and Hanny and Lenny and Max and Amanda all show up because Karen invited them because you know because of she's she did. a psycho because she's a little psycho girl and she wants everyone to witness <coughs> everybody's pain. Mm-hmm. Um, everyone says one nice thing about Louis and it's very sweet. And Shannon gives Christy her condolences afterwards. It's very nice. All right, so a couple days later, Christy's sitting at the Delaney's, and Shannon shows up, and she's got a puppy. Like, what? Turns out it's one of Astrid's, and Christy's like, I didn't even know she had puppies. She's like, well, you'd never asked. <laughs> um, so anyways, the Shannon's family has decided this puppy is for Christy and David Michael. Um, and... I think that's a pretty big decision to make, but at least Christy does call her mom and checks it out with her. And she's like, yeah, we were going to get a puppy as soon as David Michael was ready. And we were going to get one of the Kilborns, buy one of the Kilborns puppies. So, yay, what a fantastic coincidence. So then they call David Michael to come over and he's a little wary at first, obviously. Uh, cause he's still grieving his puppy. Um, and, but then obviously he gets right down on the floor and starts playing with her. And Christy tells him how, um, yeah, it's his if he wants it. And he says, and while well, she goes over the, you know, this isn't to replace Louie, of course. Um, he turns out okay with it and decides to name her Shannon. Whose is that, he asked. He looked from Shannon to the snobs. Actually, she's ours, I answered, if you want her. I told him about the Kilborn's offer. I don't want her, David Michael said rudely. I felt like shaking him. She isn't Louie. But before I could do anything, David Michael knelt down on the floor in spite of himself. The puppy pranced over him and stood with her front feet on my brother's knees. David Michael smiled. Shannon and I looked at each other and smiled too. We keep her, said my brother. She won't be Louie. Louie was special. No, I agreed. Louie was one of a kind. This puppy is a girl, and she'll look different and act different. She's not a new Louie. Good. So, it's lovely. Um, But the one little bit you skipped in there, I was actually going to bring up, because no. I don't think uh, Christy would appreciate today's uh, doggo pupper meme culture, because she corrects him. He says uh, something about her nozzle. Oh, Ooh, she has a soft nozzle, and she goes muzzle. I correct yeah. him. So I don't know if she'd be down with boop and snoots, uh. or, <laughs> or puppers having snoozles, or anything like that. <clears throat> so a few days later, the whole club's over at the mansion, just hanging out because Christy, as Christy points out to us, oh, sometimes they like to all get together to not do business. It's like. Well, thank God. Huh. Um, and Shannon comes over, and they've been talking about her and decide to offer her a position in the club. Um, but Shannon's like, you know, she really likes the idea of the club, but she's just, like, really too busy to go to all those meetings and have all those jobs um, with school stuff and after-school stuff and everything. 
So the girls decide, hey, maybe she'd like to be an associate member just like Logan. And that she gladly accepts. Yay! Oh, the end. (laughs) The end. And that was your most frightening book. It was. Did you see all my reactions? (laughs) It was. I mean, I want to talk more about the dogs I've had, but I'm just going to cry more. Oh, I can't do it. You know what? I'll put up social media posts about the dogs I've had. Die. What? (laughs) I said I'll put up social media posts about the dogs I've had die Mm. on me. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Because I can't talk about it. (laughs) You can't talk about the dogs that have died. No. Hey guys, massive, massive content warning here. If you're sensitive to horrible dog deaths, um, please skip ahead about a minute and a half. Um, I will put the actual time codes in the show notes. Um, I highly suggest you skip. So, my dog, my worst dog death, well, Rocky (laughs) was pretty bad. He pretty much died. Well. No, don't, don't, don't. Oh, your dog. No. No, don't talk about Rocky. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so my dog that died. (laughs) He kept jumping over the fence. So my dad had the bright idea to put him inside the fence and to put him on a chain inside the fence. I'm not going to, no, we're not going to do this. This is horrible. It is horrible. No. It's something I had to live through. It is something you had to live through. As a through. child. Okay. <laughs> massive content warning. Can we say that? Yeah, massive content warning. Okay, and I'll put in I'll put in I'll put in uh time. Huh. Yeah, stamps. Okay, go. So the dog still jumped over the fence, but the chain was not long enough for him to land on the other side. So he ended up hanging himself. <laughs> And I saw him and started screaming, and my brother ran over and tried to lift him up, and he couldn't lift him over the fence. Yeah. And he died and pooped all over my brother. Well, that's good. I didn't know that part. Yeah. So that happened. That happened. And I cried. Yeah! Did it, did, I mean, did it traumatize you? Um, I mean, obviously it did something. It it was very vivid in my mind, and I I remembered it. I mean, I mean, I, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I remember pretty much everything about it. Yeah, about that that yeah. time and that moment, and including crying. And I think it. It made me hate my dad a little. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, he didn't do it on purpose, but he also right. didn't do it very... He didn't have a lot of thought into it, obviously. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm... I remember pretty well blaming him for it. And, well... And not getting any closure for it, you know, yeah. from, from that angle. Yeah. yeah. I asked because my first dog that died, it set off my depression. Mm. My lifelong. <laughs> yeah. So, I asked. But I will not talk about that more right now. <laughs> fun times. Mm-hmm. I was just about to say, this is real fun. <laughs> Chapter 5 in Anne's biography, (laughs) entitled Best Friends. Basically, we get the genesis of Christy and Mary Ann. Um, Beth McCreever was the only other girl Anne's age on good old Dodds Lane. Remember Dodds Lane? No. So they become besties, uh, but it turned out perfectly. And like, while Anne is like Mary Ann, Christy is like a heightened version of Beth. 
She's described as active and energetic, funny and adventurous. And so, basically, this whole chapter is a rundown of all the things they did together as kids. They played secret agents, mainly spying on Beth's mom, um, employment office, skateboarding, swimming, ice skating. And this part actually sounds dope as fuck. Um, When it rained, the woods behind the houses on Dodds Lane would sometimes fill with water. If there was a cold snap and the water froze, Anne and Beth would pull on their ice skates and glide around among the trees. Mm. Yeah, it was a special feeling, sort of magical. Very different than zipping along the open space of Lake Carnegie. That sounds dope and magical as fuck, mm. yeah. <laughs> they also like to play on Beth's family's lawnmower. Because, like, there weren't a lot of riding lawnmowers. But they only did this under Beth's dad's supervision. They want you to know. Um, and of course there were sleepovers and they made up secret languages and put on plays and enjoyed grifting neighborhood children. Really? Yes. In what ways? So once the girls put on a circus at Anne's garage, they made up signs and invited all the kids on Dodd's Lane. They set up chairs and charged a quarter for admission. The problem was they hadn't really planned what they'd do once everyone was assembled. They tried to pull handkerchiefs out of a trick magic container that looked empty, but it didn't really work. And they had a few tightrope walking acts and tumbling acts, but those were short. So after about 12 minutes, they took their bows and said goodbye. <laughs> no mention of giving the money back because that sounds like shit. But they kept that money. <laughs> uh, let's see. They also played in library, which the Pikes do in one book. And I totally did with only my brother as a yeah. customer. But yeah. I made up little cards and uh huh, checked books out because I'm a nerd. Um, <laughs> they made up a neighborhood newsletter, and I can't imagine knowing everyone in my neighborhood well enough to do that. That's right. so weird. Well, foreign, I guess. Um, and then they made up a bunch of shitty clubs. Um, none like the Baby Service Club. They all just kind of fizzled out. They didn't really know what to do. Um, one part I liked was one year they did a Halloween house in Anne's basement. And they did things like, you know, spaghetti. Um, well, they say it's for ghost insides. No, you do that for brains, right? Mm-hmm. That's what I did. And peeled grapes for eyeballs. So, yeah, we totes did that when I was in second grade. We had a basement. Which you not a lot a of kids. You did a well, haunted house. I mean, it was kind of split level, but it was a basement because I mean it's Texas, but it was on the lake, so and we couldn't use it because it flooded all the time. Mm. <laughs> so it wasn't like livable space, but it was downstairs. So yeah, um, but yeah, we took the whole, uh, we invited the whole second grade class, and we had like some kids party book that taught you how to like make. Uh-huh. party foods and stuff yeah so i think that's where most of it came from um i know we made my mom made a bitchin skeleton cake it was uh-huh. like the different parts of the skeleton made out of cake nice and then it had flaming sugar cube eyeballs that was dope <laughs> as fuck um and the best part was our teacher cake and i mean when you're seven that's like really heckin cool oh yeah <laughs> yeah and I just looked her up, and she died this past summer. Aww. She was like 87. She was great. Mrs. Folden taught at Joe Wright Elementary. At the new Joe Wright, the cafeteria is named after her and her husband, mm. which is very nice. <laughs> so my kids' preschools in um, Richardson, um, they would always have stuff for holidays, mm. including Halloween, and they had parties like that. Was it called yeah. Halloween, or was it a Harvest Fest? Um, it was probably a harvest fest, yeah. But everybody did dress up in yeah. costumes. So. I don't understand the difference. It's yeah. like most harvest fests are exactly like Halloween. It's specifically because of the the religious leaning of some of the the parents and how they well, no, I know refuse to take their kids to anything associated with Halloween. Right, but they're doing the exact same stuff. Exact same stuff. <laughs> it's... 
It's like, you know what? You're not calling it by its original, um, Druid's name. Um, uh, Celtic name. It's Celtic, at least. Uh, the All Hallows Eve? Nope. Well, it starts with an S and I've never known how to say it. It's S-A-M-H-A-I-N. Um, Sam, what is it? H-A-I-N. Sam Hine. There is a... Sam Hine. Yeah. Sam Hine yeah, or Sam Hine. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. you're not calling it that. If you're calling it that, that would be even worse. <laughs> so Halloween's like nothing. <laughs> anyway. 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 Um, so Anne and her sister remind me of what... Um, this is her bestie. That is described with um, Henry David Thoreau and his brother. Okay. Um, just they were very, very close and did made their own little languages and did mm-hmm. everything together. Mm-hmm. Um, and <laughs> and then his brother was shaving one day and nicked himself with a rusty razor and got locked jaw and died. Holy shit! And so that completely changed the direction of. Uh, Henry David Thoreau's life. He uh, started second guessing like everything he had been told in life and, uh-huh. and uh, started, you know, he went to Cambridge, I think. That's anyway. in England. Oh. Harvard. Maybe it was Cambridge, Massachusetts. Yeah, where Harvard is. <laughs> um, anyway, it was where Emerson happened to be teaching uh-huh. and, you know, and Emerson. Um, became his mentor basically right. and yeah there's a whole group of them up there that were like yeah so after that uh, including trans- transcendentalist yes including did you know bronson alcott louisa may alcott's yeah. father they lived like she knew thoreau and emerson like as a child no. because they all lived on like these communes together yeah. and like Bronson Alcott was like a failure of a man like hmm. he was like never making any money but he was a transcendentalist too yeah um, he's very interesting but anyways <laughs> yeah so, so anyway that you know it made him live outside of societal norms because mm-hmm. of that happening to him and because he got fucked in but he would have just been a regular joe if that had not right happened. he would have been a how old were they i mean he, old enough he would have been but yeah um i mean it was before he went off to college so it was around 17 18 years old mm-hmm. um That's and then awful. was it quick do you know or did he suffer no, for it was like not a month quick uh, it was not <laughs> uh yeah and so I just think about, you know, if his brother had lived, he probably would have been another Anne and just made jaunty little young adult books for <laughs> for the Cambridge people. Everybody was like, just thought of him as very strange because he started, he still, you know, was felt him that he was religious mm-hmm. and that, but he didn't believe in going into a church to celebrate God. He, he thought that going out into nature and right, right, being right. around God's creation was was more true mm-hmm. to celebrating God. Here's a here's a fun one too. Um, I don't know if it's what made her become such a great actress, but so Catherine Hepburn and her older brother were very close. Um, he was like two years older than her. And so they were staying with their aunt, which they went, you know, just to hang out with her a lot. Um, and they went to a show one night and they were like 12 and 14. And this guy um, did like this magic trick where it looked like he was hanging himself. Um, but then he was fine. And then like, I don't know if it was the next morning. But soon after that, um, she went up to wake him up in the attic where he was sleeping and she found him hanging and so like they don't know if it was a depression type of thing or if he was trying to do the trick yeah but uh yeah 12 year old Catherine hepburn found her brother hanging mm. isn't that awful this is the biggest bummer of a show ever <laughs> <laughs> dead dogs Enjoy and it, siblings <laughs> um spoofy <laughs> <laughs> so next week um is our last uh october book and the episode comes out on halloween 
So we're going to do it up big with Halloween Party in R.L. Stein Fair Street book. It's one I read over and over and over again, but I can't remember anything about it except there's a big house and a party. Hmm. <laughs> so we'll see. <laughs> Thanks so much for listening, everybody, to this <laughs> bummer of a fucking show. <laughs> Well, unless you get to hear, <laughs> unless you get to hear Jess almost dying and gagging. And we'll them. see how much of it I keep in. <laughs> but, but y'all, we got some real emotion <laughs> from Stephen from a babysitter's club book. <laughs> we're rereading the books of your childhood. So you don't have to. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.